Ginger. Ginger. Cranberry. No. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to my channel, Sky Life, where I explore the world of wellness and try all sorts of health and lifestyle trends and challenges. In this video, I'm going to be trying a food sensitivity test. Now, I have heard so many different opinions about food sensitivity tests. And honestly, I am so confused as to what to believe. And I've seen a ton of articles about how food sensitivity tests are invalid, how they don't really work, how they're not worth your money. But on the other hand, I see many medical professionals saying that they're very useful. As we know in the world of wellness, there is just way too much information out there with way too many opinions that it's impossible to know what the truth is. So I think the best way to do this is to just form my own opinion via trying this out for myself and seeing what happens. So I've seen a lot of controversy around particularly food sensitivity tests that you administer yourself at home. These take home tests that you send into a lab and get a report back. So if I was gonna take a food sensitivity test, I wanted to get one of the best out there and also have it be monitored by a medical professional. So that's why I went to Next Health to get this done. Next Health is a health optimization center where we utilize the latest technologies, treatments, and advancements in healthcare and formulate an individualized plan to each patient's needs. The food sensitivity test at Next Health tests the most common 96 foods from spices, seasonings, fruits, vegetables, animal products, meat products, dairy, along with gluten. Our test tests antibodies, and antibodies are part of your immune system. And when you become sensitive to a food, you might not notice the sensitivity or your body might not elicit a response to that food for sometimes up to 72 hours, making it nearly impossible to determine what foods are actually causing inflammation and a systemic response that can sometimes be incredibly healthy foods like avocados, pumpkin seeds, salmon, tuna, kale. It's not necessarily the food that is dangerous or the food that is causing an allergic or sensitive response. It's the person's individual health state. But we look at gut permeability. That permeability causes foods and protein particles to escape the GI system and mount an immune response. It's based on individual inflammatory responses and individualized gut permeability. So the food sensitivity test is a blood draw. We're testing and looking at two immune responses, one called IgA antibodies and one called IgG antibodies. IgA antibodies typically are more of a localized response. People may experience things like abdominal cramping, bloating, even things like constipation and loose stools. The IgG is a systemic response. Oftentimes people may experience joint pain, headaches, chronic fatigue, changes in their skin, changes in their hair, even things down to changes in their hormone production. Chronic inflammation or a systemic response is nearly impossible to figure out until you have removed the offending foods causing the markers of inflammation. It's so hard to decipher in your everyday diet what foods are causing issues. Right, because some are delayed response, some are immediate. Sometimes I'll get an upset stomach or I get fatigued and I, I just don't know why. Yeah, and I mean, a lot of the things that people are sensitive to are things we consider healthy. So sometimes it's like eggs or spinach, broccoli, like mm -hmm. things that we traditionally just think are very good for us, but we're all so different. You did it. Wow, You're done. that wasn't as bad as I thought. Good. Oh my God, that's so much blood. <laughs> About two weeks later, the results were in. I feel like I'm about to get some bad news. <laughs> well, depending on what your diet currently is, it might not be bad at all, but okay. it depends on how many of these foods you eat. Okay, let's see. Are you ready? Yeah, just okay. deliver what I need to know. All right, there you go. So the foods that you're going to have to eliminate from your diet for four months are going to be pineapple, navy beans, eggs, almonds, lima beans and ginger. Ginger! Ginger, cranberry, no. <laughs> cranberry mustard, garlic, mushrooms, and onions. Whoa. So how many of these foods do you currently eat on a day-to-day -day basis? Quite a few of them. Okay. Some, not at all. The lima beans can do away with those, but almonds, ginger, I eat a lot of those two foods. I mean, there's so many foods that I'm negative for, so I'm trying to look at the glass half full because I can still eat all of these other things. Ginger, almonds, eggs, I love those three things. 
that's gonna be really hard. But we realize too that you don't have to give it up forever. You give it up for four months. We do a gut healing protocol during those four months. After the four months, we recheck you and ideally all of the food sensitivities are gone. It's not that these foods are bad for you, it's your current body state. You do have some gut permeability. Here's a breakdown of my full report. I'm considered sensitive to pineapple, navy beans, egg whites, almonds, lima beans, and ginger. And I'm considered moderately sensitive to cranberry, mustard, garlic, mushrooms, and onion. So for the next four months, I would eliminate all of these foods from my diet. This ginger, I unfortunately need to say goodbye to. Oh, so sad. I would also get a gut health IV once a month for extra support and gut repair. At the end of four months, we would retest and see if I'd made any progress. The time has come to review my kitchen and see what is in here currently that I can no longer eat. I have a lot of garlic that I use for cooking, so none of that I can use anymore. Unfortunately, I have an entire thing of cranberry juice, so that's a real shame. I guess I'm just gonna have to give that to my roommate. I really don't know how I'm gonna give up almond butter. This is really sad to me. Luckily, I'm pretty much done with this case, so I can just get rid of it and not be wasting too much. So this is where this really starts to suck, because I love RX bars. I I love these little nut butter packets. I love their bars. These chocolate peanut butter squeezy packs are just so heavenly. But it has egg whites. No! I'm really, really sad about this one. I love these. A lot of the things I'm sensitive to, I eat so much of and I think are so healthy for me and are generally really healthy foods. However, I'm really curious to see if by eliminating these things, I actually do start to feel better because they may be causing some underlying issues that I really had no idea they were causing. So we're gonna put it to the test and see what happens. Even though it was challenging to eliminate some of these foods, in the grand scheme of things, this is really not that big of a deal. And I feel super lucky and grateful that I even have enough to eat to begin with. Although letting go of foods I eat all the time, like almonds, ginger, and eggs, was really difficult, I made a conscious choice to not eat these foods and most of the time I was really successful with it. So there were a few times where I slipped up. I had a harder time with things like garlic and onion and even mustard seed that tends to be in a lot of different types of dressings or sauces or dips. Did I notice any significant results? I do think that my stomach sensitivities subsided, but I was also getting the gut health IV, so it could have to do with that. Over the course of four months, I've also been partaking in other types of wellness activities and other videos, so there's just way too many factors for me to control for all the variables that would result in eliminating these foods from my diet and what effect that may or may not have. You had moderate sensitivities, so not too too positive, it was a middle of the road, to cranberry, mustard, garlic, mushroom, and onion. And then you had positive or more severe sensitivities to pineapple, navy bean, egg whites, almonds, lima beans, and ginger. So we're going to see with the updated report, you have made improvements, you've done a good job. You're moderate, so you're less severe, are cranberry and pineapple, navy bean, egg whites, mustard, garlic, and lima beans. We have seen a couple of your sensitivities eliminated, including onions. And then we see that your positive or more severe tests have actually decreased and you're only more positive to almond and ginger. Ones that were severe or positive just hopped over to being more moderate. Yes. Okay. So we've seen a huge improvement in your overall gut health. The almond and the ginger. That's interesting because those were the hardest two to give up but I feel like I really tried not to eat those at all. Okay. Whereas like onion was harder mm -hmm. to like not eat and I feel like I probably messed up more on something like onion than on almond and ginger, but maybe it's because I was eating so much almond and ginger right. to begin with. Exactly. So it's not uncommon to see your more severe um, sensitivities take longer to be eliminated from your body system. Ginger would be the one thing I'd expect to improve because it was what I was consciously trying to not consume, right. knowing my previous ginger addiction. We can even see things like cranberry, you were at a 37 and you're now at a 20. Your navy beans, you were at a 30 and you're now currently testing at an 18. And once you actually get to an 11, 
you're technically considered unreactive or unresponsive. So we're all heading and trending in the right direction. I'm really happy that we do see overall improvement because I, I feel like my gut can feel the improvement. Yes. I used to get a lot of bloating or random stomach issues yeah. and I feel like now it's pretty level. I do think it was really useful information and I definitely think I got a lot out of this whole experiment. Was it life changing? Not really. But that doesn't mean that it wouldn't be for someone else. Just as Megan laid out at the beginning of the video, I think this is more about understanding how we can heal our gut and our gut lining because that is so important for our overall health and well-being and especially how the gut interacts with the brain. That's where you see that brain fog often stems from an issue in the gut. So by identifying these foods that could be contributing to your gut issues and eliminating them, I do see the value in that. And there have been people who have used food sensitivity tests and have gotten really amazing results by doing these elimination diets. I always encourage following your own intuition when it comes to your health and well-being. So if you intuitively feel like this might be something that could help you or give you some insight into your own health and your own body, then I definitely suggest trying it out. I would not necessarily recommend doing one of these take-home tests. I would definitely go to a facility like Next Health or a medical provider to get a food sensitivity test taken. If you live in the LA area and you're interested in going to Next Health, I put a link in the video description because they are offering you 20% off and also, a free week of cryo if you want to try it out. And that is it for this episode of Skylife. Thank you so much for watching. It's so exciting for me to connect with you every single week. I am developing some really exciting content coming up that I can't wait to share with you. Please let me know if you enjoyed this video by liking it and leaving a comment below. And remember, you have the power to thrive. You have the power to live your best life ever. I will see you next week, bye.